All right. There we go. We're live. Live? On Imagine Facebook. That. How does yeah. that happen? I, I feel know. I feel alive. It's, Technology's grand. I know. It's like we're some tech guys and we maybe almost kind of know what we're doing sometimes. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I've learned something new. All right. What I'll are we doing? You. You, you, guys, you guys look pretty well piped in. So you know, it looks like <laughs> to me you know what we're doing. Yeah. All right. That's the important thing, right? It's all about the appearance. <laughs> we, we, we did this to keep you tethered. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to get up three times. And, and what's happening? We have you tied down. Yeah. So here we are at the SharePoint conference. Here we Another go again. SharePoint conference, um, 2018. We are in the expo hall. So if you hear some background noise, if random people just come up and start talking to us, um, <laughs> just excuse the noise. But yeah. it's Scott and I, and we're here with Mark Cashman. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah. No. Thank thanks. For, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. I mean, it's a pretty exciting time, obviously, with SPC and some of the things we announced yesterday and things that are continuing to roll out. Yeah. What do no, you guys think so far? I, I think it's great. We have SharePoint conference back again. Obviously, there's some. Um, uh, so some marketing push and some great new functionality coming. So uh, this is a wonderful thing. And it's always good to come out and see community and friends and, and people I haven't seen in a long right. time. That's like, the thing. Ignite is cool, but it is big. It's really hard <laughs> to find all your really good SharePoint friends at Ignite. Um, I, I remember we originally tried to position Ignite around, well, there's a little mini SPC within Ignite, which is technically yeah. true. But here it's just completely <laughs> dedicated to it. So you, it can't, you can't miss it. New friends, old faces, yep. however it goes. That's cool. Yeah, okay. that's fun. So... We got you here. We got you logoed up. We even got Mark to put a MS Cloud IT Pro sticker on his shirt. But then you also have this other logo on your shirt that interests Yeah, this is our new podcast. So the SharePoint team, um, we always pump out tons of information. Obviously, we were at the conferences, and we do our blogs. And we needed something that was that in-between. You know, when we want to communicate out what we're doing, we get a lot of questions. So we tried to uh, come up with some way, you know, to, to reach out. Yep. And then if you look at this board, we have this a board. nice legacy <laughs> of people that have been already doing it. So we've been learning. Boy, podcasts are, are really great for the community, and we hope beyond the community, too, for people yep. that maybe don't know about SharePoint. So we tried to level it to think about, what about SharePoint use and adoption throughout the whole year? Okay. And so the intro zone, by nature of what we do a lot in the internet, is where we focus and really talk about not just news, but what people are doing, scenarios, how people think about SharePoint, what are the questions they have. And so on the intro zone, we try to always have a, a guest and on a main topic. And we always cover news that's ongoing. Every episode we'll have news and announcements. And then we um, try to also focus on the ecosystem. Because if we were to turn around this camera, you would see a whole expo <laughs> hall full of SharePoint partners that are a huge part of the business. You know, for us, getting the word out, but for them also in terms of building on top of SharePoint. So we wanted to make sure that there was a part of the interzone that was talking to our ecosystem partners so they could share what do they do on top of SharePoint, what do sure. they do for their customers. Okay. So um, the interzone uh, is definitely a new baby podcast, but it's growing. Uh, we've got some interest. Uh, we got a lot of great episodes lined up. Uh, we did one yesterday with Bill Bear. Hopefully that'll come out today. All right. So we've got a We did one with Bill Bear too. Ours he will be did? better, but don't oh, I don't know. <laughs> he was pretty on point. He was he was Bill Bearish. Ah. Uh, all right. Um, but anyway, we try. Right, we'll to, see we, who does better. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We should <laughs> compare stat. Microsoft's podcast versus ours. I'm better. Stat. I don't know. You guys have <laughs> been established for a little while. <laughs> but anyway, so we were, we were kind of trying to sort of live from the show, but it wasn't technically live like we're doing right now. Um, but it was great to talk with Bill, and it's always great to talk with anybody in the community. Um, so we hope a lot of interest will help guess, you know, help us get yet guests to say yes. Um, but last thing on the intro is how to get to it. You just go yeah. to aka.ms slash the intro zone all one word t-h-e-i-n-t-r-a-z-o-n-e perfect and all we'll right. include that in the show notes as well at awesome. msclouditpro.com so thanks can look, and i'm assuming yep. they can go to like itunes and yep. all of it's those in all of your all of your podcast yeah. players yeah uh, and if you go to itunes it would be helpful if you can rate and review after listening to one of the shows all right um, yep. help us get the word out but five, yeah, five really stars all the way good. five yes. stars yeah, five problems. stars for them five stars for us five yeah. stars for everybody, everybody yeah. gets five stars. you get five stars yeah you get five stars it's a give and take <laughs> awesome yeah so we'll definitely include links to all that absolutely to the site uh also for uh some more background information i know you had some posts on the tech community when that came out yeah and, uh, think, and also direct links to apple podcasts and, and get everybody in so yeah, we've got a bunch of links i'll send them to you make sure you have them Perfect. and just think about it. anytime there's an episode i'll try to do a tech community post awesome okay. um, and i should also mention that if you know chris mcnulty who's on the team yep. um we've also had naomi money penny as a co-host Bill Bear, like I mentioned, as a co-host. So we're trying to pull in a lot of people. You'll see a lot of people from Microsoft, but the intent is to also have a lot of people from outside of Microsoft. Excellent. Okay. Love it. So is it a weekly 
bi-weekly? It's bi-weekly okay. at this stage. Outside of at SPC, we kind of squeezed the new one in there. So got there'll it. be another one shortly after SPC uh, that we're focusing around on mobile. We got the mobile team that mm -hmm. came in, shared a little bit about what they were going to share here, but we'll publish that out. And then if we can keep up the pace, you guys tell me. Is it, is it tough? <laughs> is it tough? Uh, let's see. We've, we've done 63 in less than a year. So uh, it catches up with you. Yeah. Yes, I, have gray, I started out. I didn't have gray hair. No gray hair. Before. No, no yeah. gray hair. No. Okay, My awesome. hair hasn't changed. Apparently, I <laughs> age better and handle the pressure <laughs> better than Scott does. Yeah. I'm going to sit over closer <laughs> yeah. this way just yeah. so that maybe my peppery doesn't. <laughs> I'm starting to go that way. All right. Awesome. So yeah, we'll definitely get folks uh, hooked up and, and integrated into that ecosystem and, and get them all Appreciate ramped up. Uh, let's talk about some of the announcements and new functionality yeah. that's, that's, that's coming down the pipe. So uh, I absolutely love the focus on creating new words and adding new things to the dictionary and ififying everything. So <laughs> groupify, teamify, hubify, all the things. Uh, so why, why don't we talk about some of that functionality sure. and what's coming in place and, and the integrations with some of the more uh, collaborative workspaces. Yeah, so today we have holified ourselves. Yes. We are now <laughs> in the expo hall. And a uh, big thing around what we did with Microsoft Teams, you know, if you looked at what we did a number of months ago, it was a lot about what is our experience of SharePoint in mm -hmm. Microsoft Teams. And so you can do news pages, of course files, that's a default experience. And you can set up things to automate when you publish, it shows up there automatically. A lot of the work that we announced yesterday around Teams was what are we doing inside of SharePoint to make that connection to Teams? Some of it's just an awareness campaign. Yep. You know, there are a lot of document libraries that get created and within the special document libraries connected to Microsoft Teams, which is the default one, there's a default folder, which is the general folder. Yep. And anytime you add a channel, you get a new folder in Teams. When you're in the SharePoint side, sometimes people weren't aware that this was connected to Teams. <laughs> turns out. It turns out yeah. Teams and Teams sites are yeah. deeply connected, um, and especially that document library, that default one. So now when you're in the SharePoint interface, you'll see that there is a folder. If it's connected to a channel, you will see it. And if you want to then go to it, the button actually takes you to the conversation. Excellent. So it takes you over to Teams when you want to talk about files and whatever it is that you're sharing across the team. Um, the other thing that you'll see on the side of SharePoint is what if you have a SharePoint site that possibly is connected to an Office 365 group, but it doesn't yet have the awareness of Teams mm -hmm. for chat. So of course that whole ecosystem is pretty well connected, yep. Yep. but there's a point in time where Teams didn't exist and these sites did. Now in the bottom left, you'll be able to do it in one click, basically like you said, Teamify your site, which essentially does what used to take, which you can actually technically do now, <laughs> but it takes about five clicks. Yep. And so big part of the, the new UI is to save you a bunch of clicks and to also call out, hey, here's some new functionality you might not have heard of. When you click it, it'll spin up Teams and connect it. So it is now the default team site for that Teams experience. Perfect. So anytime you now go to the Teams and you share a file, it automatically will get stored into that default document library that you were already using. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. So Very that definitely cool. super simplifies the user experience and the onboarding process. Yep. So and we hope whether that. I'm coming <clears throat> through a channel in a team or I've been onboarded through SharePoint because someone sent me a link or something else, there's yep. a little bit more automated discovery and, and some more kind of ticklers for me as a user to reach out and say, hey, what is this thing? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And we hope it also just addresses the question, do I use Microsoft Teams or a SharePoint team site? And the answer is yes. They're, they're, they're both connected. Sa same thing. But they have yeah. different use yep. cases, yep. And, but they're deeply connected from where the content is stored and served up from, that SharePoint. Where you chat, that's Teams. Perfect. Yeah. And we're starting to see more integrations there as well. So the not only the onboarding experience, being able to navigate back and forth between them, but actually bringing over more native SharePoint experiences into the Teams experience. So. Yep support for the same types of views with row formatters and column formatters, yeah. uh, which is super exciting super cool. and, and, and super good. Uh, I was also really impressed by the integration on the development platform and the ability to integrate web parts directly into tabs. Yeah. So I think it was, uh, it, it was a little off-putting at first when you just hear on the outside that, well, we're going to support SharePoint and Teams. You already did that. You I already had that. tabs and embedding and and pages and things like that. Uh, but to see that unified development model come together, so now that uh, really awesome weather web part or bejeweled web part, whatever it happens to be that we authored and wrote on the other side. I want you to build a bejeweled web part. I am not a developer, I but I know some that. and I can buy them some donuts. It's okay. I, I can we do can a little collaboration happen. and then I can drop my jewels and <laughs> explode my... Done, done, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's super turnkey, right? Let's, yeah. let's just do a deployment to one surface, have one common 
development platform, write once, run anywhere, yeah. uh, at least between those two ecosystems. Do you get a sense that the teams are talking to each other? Uh, yeah, a, a, a little bit. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to catch from the outside. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't always see the fruition of things, right, until they're kind of shown to us up front. So it, it was really good to see that. And yeah. it certainly codified it for me and, and helped put it together. Well, and I think we had the right person on stage sharing the news. You know, somebody like Vesa, yep. who is pretty big in the community, definitely hears a lot of feedback. And I think a lot of the consistent, <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> the consistent feedback that he hears is, do I do it like this or do I do it like this when I'm in here or here? And his more mature answer as we go, uh, as the product matures with the SharePoint framework being able to be applied outside of SharePoint, and of course having native experiences that you build in SharePoint look great in Teams, but now have the ability to take a SharePoint framework web part and expose that through Teams either on a page or on its yep. own. The, the basis of it is we're talking about the same, same development patterns, and that's what that team, the Patterns and Practices team, is all about. It's, it's, and it's hugely true. enabling for customers, ISVs, it doesn't really matter who it happens to be, right? That's Leverage right. that same reusable IP in multiple places, yep. uh, same functionality, consistent experience, and being able to kind of train your users once, direct them in once, and it doesn't matter which surface they land in. That's right. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's a, that's a great story there. Yeah, I think with the SharePoint framework, the other benefit that we get is not only is it coming between SharePoint and Teams, but it's coming on-premises as well. And so there's a big push for us, obviously, with the SharePoint framework to get more of those capabilities into SharePoint Server 2016 already and now coming mm -hmm. with the beta and later this year, the release of SharePoint Server 2019. And what that really means, I think, for our customers in that same pattern of between SharePoint and Teams is if they build something on-premises that eventually might move to the cloud or maybe be a hybrid type approach, the framework is the thing that's going to keep everything consistent. Wherever you're deployed and however you want to release your solutions, or if they move over time, you know, there isn't going to be that big headache of, oh, I built it as something that can't plug in or move. Yep. Yeah, um, the, the, the thinking, cohesion is great. Yeah. And, and being able to see that not across just customers' customizations, and, uh, but also the other native web parts and functionality that's available. So yep. as new web parts are added, we saw... Uh, a number of things with planner integrations yep. and being able to embed planner plans or individual tasks, linking back and forth, and that's all supported now in both surfaces as well. That's right. And uh, first, uh, just uh, one point on the SharePoint framework, and you see the web parts that we're building, they are actually building on top of the SharePoint framework. So it's not like, oh, here's a design surface for you to go build, <laughs> and then we're going to do it secret yeah, sauce. Yeah, we did something extra yeah, over right. here. It's fine. No, Don't worry about how we did it. Don't look behind the curtain. Right. <laughs> but when you talk to the team's team that maybe didn't start with the framework, but they're interested in it, we're interested in connecting to their API. We want to do a lot of stuff. You know, the, the real value is please tell me you're using it, big SharePoint team, because mm -hmm. if you are, then it's going to not only be good, but get better, because they need to have the – be mobile, be performant, be, you know, responsive and all that stuff. Um, but specifically with the planner web part, you know, we've had the planner web part for a little while. It's tied to that same motion of Office 365 groups. You get a planner plan. And, of course, now you can go to the plan easily with navigation. Mm -hmm. But what we're bringing in, we started with a web part. You can think about a web part being a zone on a page. So yep. you could expose your plan. You yep. could switch between it. And it was interactive. I could actually work with my plan, check off tasks, assign new people to different tasks. What we announced at the show uh, yesterday and, and really are going to bring to market pretty quickly is the ability to, when you go into the new menu, so I'm on a, a home page or I'm on a page in SharePoint and I actually want to create either a new document or now a new plan. So I could click new word or when I click new plan, it's actually going to create me a whole new full page planner app. Right there. Right, right there. Right awesome. in your SharePoint. Right in Sorry. SharePoint. I actually don't have to go to planner and there's nothing bad about going to planner, but you know, if you're really just going to open up a page, drop some tasks, and get some work done, right in context with whatever yes. else you're doing with your team, that's the whole point. Um, you can also, when you go to create new plan, if you have an existing plan, you can bring that in as a full page app too. Okay. Very yeah. Cool. I, I love that concept of giving users kind of one-stop shopping and letting them in. So uh, I've been doing, you know, identity and operations for a long time, and we really encourage the use of uh, my apps and, and directly integrating SaaS apps yeah, from, yeah. from the galleries and Let's use things like my apps and manage browsers to give users one place to land. And now we can do the same thing with Teams. So it's an experience where not only can you see what you have access to right away, but I don't need to leave it to go over to SharePoint or to find my files yep. or to access my planner plan or whatever it happens to be along the way. It's all just there and 
I've got chat and, and all the other things that come along with that experience. Yep. Yeah. And, I've joked with some of my clients where I've talked to them like, yeah, you guys don't really need a browser anymore. Just open up Teams and you can get to everything. You can get to your SharePoint library, yeah. you can chat, you can, yeah. it's all just right there. And it's really cool to see all of that coming together. And like you said, for me, we tweeted something out yesterday about, um, like Scott had mentioned, that ability that now all your SharePoint views and all your rich columns and all your metadata yeah. and all of that rich document library functionality is surfaced in Teams now instead of just a list of files. Yep. And it seems like everybody has just been waiting for that. I know my client's been waiting for <laughs> yep. that. No, I, and I, we've been waiting to deliver it because obviously things take time to yep. build. Um, the first one that they started with was actually lists. So SharePoint lists, yep. <clears throat> if you build it in SharePoint and bring it into Teams as a tab, you actually get the full rich capability to see your, te see your list. If you've done, like you said, column formatting now with the row formatting, that'll be pretty cool. Yep, that's teams. exciting. Grouping, I, sorting, grouping, filtering. Sorting, yeah. filtering. It's all very functional. And even when you go to do some flow work, if you want to instantiate a flow, you know, it's a real list yeah. just in the context of where you're doing all of your other teamwork. Same now with libraries. You have the ability to pin items. You can see the, the rich thumbnails that will come through soon. Um, and, of course, column, you know, the, yeah. the flip filtering and yep. sorting and whatnot. And then the other thing that's pretty important is the announcement that we made for OneDrive, which was around the file previews. Um, for a long time, the file previews were kind of a weird experience in Teams <laughs> where you wouldn't really see the file yep. preview until you clicked on the file itself and it went full screen. Um, so you still were within, the, within Teams. So some yep. of this you know, is just catching up, but what you can see in OneDrive and now in SharePoint document libraries is um, you know, in the Teams uh, document library. Yep. So you see the rich previews. When you go to full screen, of course, you're still in the UI and you see a really nice rich preview full screen. Yeah, yeah we, we can stay in that experience. We don't get taken to a new browser tab yep. and shuffled around. That's right. and, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it also gives organizations and, and customers and adopters of the platform opportunities to target workloads a little bit better. So we can start to think about our intranet yep. as a traditional intranet again. Is, is it uh, our architecture area? You know? like we, we, we do <laughs> is that me, Mark? Architecture? No, no, not no. that kind of architecture. <laughs> it's it's uh, named after you, did you? Know all right. That? I, I will stand like yeah, an yeah. architect. Employee onboarding can be an experience where, hey, uh, you know, go to the HR site and fill out your new hire paperwork and go yeah. ahead and do yeah. all those things. And by the way, maybe we do a team with a class of new hires. So as you all come in and we, we've taught 50 of you about your new benefits and everything yeah. else, uh, you, you're going to work in the same organization. So why not have a cohort and chat together and continue that experience forward? I think it's a great scenario. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. kind of going with that internet, you guys have also done a bunch of things. You talked about a bunch of things around communication sites. Yeah, we had a bunch of in, uh, stuff around the intranet. You know, we, we talked about communication sites and, and really what we want to get to is the ability to, for anybody to create any portal. You know, if you're still using that word or still thinking in that way, <laughs> we, we certainly want to move people to modern. Communication sites are leaps and bounds. I mean, I don't know about you. I think about everything in terms of portlets and web spheres. So. Portlets and Okay. Okay. Well, welcome to the modern yeah. world. I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm still stuck in MCMS. That's all right. So. We, don't, don't we can get it. back to the gray hair conversation. Yeah. I, I'm still there sometimes, too. But with communication sites, certainly, uh, you know, some simple things that we've done. If you have a news article or a page, you've been able to use comments for a while. But now you can do things that are a little bit more modern, like at mentioning in the communication site. Um, and that action, at mention will actually trigger then a notification yep. on your mobile device. So not only are people leaving comments, that's great. Uh -huh. If you at mention somebody, it's a lot easier to bring somebody into the conversation. And to really bring them into the conversation, they get an alert. Oh, somebody at mentioned me. They can go right into the article. It loads up in the SharePoint mobile app. They can read the comment. They can reply to it. And it's a really nice engagement awesome. model. Um, some of the big innovations that we really brought were around both pages and news, because if you think about news as a special type of page, um, the difference being when I publish news, it goes out into the world. With my page, it's kind of a navigation <laughs> tool on my site. It's a place where I'm yep. on my site. Yep. But both of them are based on the same authoring canvas, the same way to build out sections and layouts and web parts and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but now you can better target who is this page for. So when somebody comes to a site, they'll have a unique experience. So you can say this page or set of pages or this site is set for this particular group or this yeah. set of people. Uh, and those can be security groups or Office 365 groups. Um, you can also audience target um, in the future with web parts as well. So that when somebody's on the page, they'll be able to see a unique experience. Um, if specifically to show them certain content or to maybe not show them something at all. Um, which is then really based on the page metadata. Yep. So we introduced the ability to not only that you have metadata like everybody has expected on pages, but now you can go in and set your metadata columns 
on the pages library. And then on individual pages, of course, you can adjust that the same as you would expect on a document. If I'm in a document in OneDrive or SharePoint, I click on it, click information, and there is all the metadata. And mm -hmm. I can change it in line. Now you'll be able to do that with pages. Once you do that, you two are probably smarter than me. Once you have <laughs> metadata on anything, you can create views. Yeah, you can create you know, better filter, ways filter. to search filter. And you can do yeah, lots no, of great it, it's, it's We're starting to get parity with more of that classic experience. That's right. So, so audience so, targeting, the ability to connect web parts. Yep access to on-page metadata where we might have had that hidden in a property bag or something else in yep. the past and, and done a customization. Now it's going to just natively there uh, and able to be surfaced in this modern responsive experience and uh, accessible any device, any location, you got you know, all, all, all that great and, stuff. And that's the so thing is it, it, it does go all the way through. You know, some of this is more governance and admin side mm -hmm. of things of setting it up. But boy, once it's there, then it really will flow to the right people on any device and potentially even at the right time. I, I, it's, it's a real enablement scenario, right? And, yep. and, and being able to bring existing customers who might still be in classic for those reasons and holding on and, and you know, those walls are slowly crumbling down and, and kind of falling out of the way. Yep. And we can start to onboard more and more into modern experiences and be on the uh, platform where well, where the platform's going, yep, right? Yep, uh, yep. We're, we're going to have to get there someday, one right. way or the other. So why not start to well, get we there don't as want we, can we don't today. want you to feel forced, but we do want to bring you into modern space because not only is it just sort of the, oh, the new thing from Microsoft, but it really is uh, much more stable, much more performant on the client side. So the browser experience for end users is better. Mobile is sort of a default. So that, you know, accessing a page on mobile in 2013. <laughs> uh, it's a little iffy. <laughs> it's a little yeah. iffy. You may have to pinch and zoom a little. But today, they really reflow nicely. And a lot of the things that we do natively make it so that it's a great experience in mobile. Uh, and that typically, and I've heard this now actually recently in the last month, two times customers saying, yeah, that was phase two for us. <laughs> when we rolled out our internet, we had no mobile. And it was like, Ugh. you know, of course you want mobile these days. So yeah. um, pretty, pretty important. And uh, a lot of the work that they're doing, both for admins and end user experiences, is pretty, pretty paramount. The last thing that we announced specific to communication sites, but I think is really more specific to pages, is let's say Mark is kind of a rogue product manager. Never. And he's, and no. he's got <laughs> never, never rogue. Never no. rogue. You know, you said architecture, so that gives yeah. me freedom to just <laughs> say whatever I want. We're trying not to get you in trouble here. Oh, no, I, I'm good to get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> but let's say I have a, a process that I need to adhere to. It's not so much that I'm going to post the wrong thing, but, you know, my manager, Dan Holm, anytime mm -hmm. I publish a blog, of course he loves to look at it. Same, I think, will be true when people publish news, either team news or, like we announced, organizational news. Absolutely. Which a lot yep. of this ties into. Of course, that's more top-down. But whether it's top-down or bottom-up, it's that context around page approval. Mm -hmm. So it could be a page or news. If I've got something that I want to share and I'm in a team site or a communication site that is going to go through some review that somebody's going to say, looks good, let's add this, let's add that, before it goes published. And the workflow is tied through Microsoft Flow. So it's really easy to start. It's integrated. You just go and start a flow. If you just want it to be a blanket flow to one person yep. all the time, or if you want to customize your flow, you'll be able to do that. Or if you want to interrupt somebody and say, well, tell us a little bit more about your approval process. Yeah, let's have some Who do we send to? Yeah, yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. How many days to wait? Those kind of things. So you can certainly build that. But basically, page approval or news approval, because I think that applies as well, um, is, is a big thing. And my question to you, if you don't mind me for a second, with those things that we announced and with our want to move a lot of people from classic to mm -hmm. modern and to be able to at some point claim, yes, any p portal that you could have built or thought of in the past, you can do with communication sites or what we'll talk about next. How, how true of a statement do you think that is with these announcements once they're in place? I, I think it's probably 95% there for, 95. For, for most of the things I've <laughs> seen. So I can think of a lot of organizations I've worked with where we've invested heavily in custom intranets and and those experiences. So being able to not only have the modern authoring canvas and being a support experience, yep. pick up mobile, uh, also some of the support that comes with communication sites and hub sites and unified navigation and better access or easier access to some of the customizations yep. makes that onboarding so much easier where when you look at it from the build versus buy and, and kind of that cost benefit of, of what's going to go in there, I'm going to get the most ROI out of just leveraging the platform as it comes and, and be in a supported way. Maybe I focus more time on training my users and making sure that they understand that there's a certain amount of change, yep. prepping them for that change, That's and important. I spend less time going out to external entities or my own developers, whatever it happens to be, and saying, 
uh, hey, build me this really complicated thing that now you have to support and operationalize and make sure we keep it up and running and it's doing what it needs to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really hard for a lot of organizations. They don't have teams of 10 developers supporting their internet. It was the guy in the corner who also wrote the <laughs> website and he does 20 other things yeah. and he can't keep up with the development models and everything else. And uh, I, I think it's hugely enabling. Uh, and everybody has to remember, they can have their cake and eat it too. They can still do those customizations and those other parts. Maybe your homepage for your internet and a couple of uh, side sites or, or kind of off puts in a hub because now we have those flat information architectures. Yep. Maybe those can be modern and those things where you've invested heavily in customization, it can still sit in a site collection over here. It can have a link in a global navigation. Customers can still access it. Uh, they can still put together those cyclical navigational structures mm -hmm. so everybody can get around. Uh, it's, it's all doable. I, I like this yeah. world that you're painting. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I I can really see going back to some of the places I've worked and some of the organizations yeah. I've worked with and saying, you know, we spent a year doing the internet. What could we do if we took a month and two people yeah. and we just let them kind of click around a little bit and see what could happen? Because if I can do it with that and actually onboard out of development teams and empower the business. So let me go to my communications department and my marketing department and say, hey, what, you know, you own the homepage of the internet. Here's news, like you said, here's publish, here's yep. approvals. And we're out of it. IT has nothing to do with it. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, if it breaks, call us because we'll put in a support ticket with Microsoft, which is way <laughs> better than putting in a support ticket with, you know, like, yeah, is that guy out getting pizza again? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or whatever that one guy in the corner you yeah, mentioned. That, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you invest heavily in donuts when you work for developers. Understood. you got to keep Understood. everybody happy. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, no, I, I think it'll be great. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm, I have customers across the gamut, too. I have some clients that are like 25 employees. I have some that are like five or 6,000. And the five or 6,000 ones, again, they have the developers. They've done a lot with the internet on some of the classic versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the modern UI definitely, like you said, with everything you've done, the web parts, the modern, the mobile, I really try to tell them, don't, don't mess with it. But I also think when you get some of these smaller clients, like the 25, 50, 100, even 150 employee companies, um, they're never going to be able to really make a nice intranet in that classic <laughs> yeah. experience. But months. Giving, right, exactly. Months, yeah. And if they even want to spend money to do it. I'm yeah. like, it's not always cheap in the classic UI. You yep. get this modern UI now, some of the new web parts you're doing, um, like you said, the news, the approvals, it makes it so much easier even for those small businesses to get a nice intranet to disseminate that information across the company, um, really build out a nice looking intranet with very minimal effort. Yeah, I also like the picture he's painting. Yeah, no, we're, 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 you can tell we've, we've done this. Much for us. <laughs> so, so let's talk about that last piece that brings that all together. Yeah, right? really so does. we've gone kind of standing through gruppification and gamification and communication sites. So let's talk about hubs and kind of how to really congeal everything and have common navigation, yep. uh, consistent coloring, theming, headers, all those kinds of things. So, right do you want to say the word? Hubification. Oh. Hubify. I, yeah, I, I, I left off my ify. Yeah. yeah, you can say it. I'm not going to we'll put any words. Hubify. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I always like to think of uh, in this world now that we have lots of offerings, if you're working with classic sites, you could groupify them. Mm -hmm. If that group wants to chat, you can teamify that group team site. <laughs> and of course, if you want to make that the center of attention for a set of groups or a family of sites, you then hubify it. Perfect. So, and that's all possible. That's all. <laughs> that's all within reason. That's not just fun ififies words. It's it's all just the magic. Yeah. It's all the magic. <laughs> um, so you nailed it with what are hub sites? Hub sites are basically a way to collect a family of sites together and to be able to then have some common experiences so that people a can find them. Some of it's just awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. Where are the sites that I have access to? And yep. how can I more easily find them than always searching for them? Um, but once they're together, then the first thing you see pop is the new cross-site navigation, of which you can build anything into, but it essentially is a way to navigate through those sites. And as you click from site to site, the nav stays the same, as yep. you would expect. And as you go from site to site, you would then have a common experience with theme. So you choose the theme for the hub. Anytime a site joins the hub or is associated yep. to it officially, it'll inherit that theme. And you can, of course, change that at any time. Modern yep. themes are super easy. You could have a custom theme if you wanted to. Um, once the site is then associated to it, it starts to get the search crawler <laughs> awareness of it. So anything that uh, is across the hubs, uh, the hub site, so let's say you have 10 sites, they'll then scope the search down to search from the hub is actually searching all of those 10 sites without you having to write a lick of code 
And of course, you know, you have to wait about 10 minutes for the crawl yep. to finish. But then all that content is available to search from the hub or from the site itself, you can always up level to the hub. But that's enabling the experience of really that flat information architecture too. Right. So in the past, we would have had these deep hierarchies to make sure that we could do those site scope searches yeah, yeah. and scope to the site collection and come out. So now we scope to the hub. That's right. And we can have separate security but maintain all the commonality that we need across. That's right. Yep. The, the last thing that sometimes we don't talk a ton about, but once you've got the connection of the sites and you've got the search all working, which, which is again within minutes, um, if I start to use the highlighted content web part, which is a kind of an important one at the parent level yep. of a site. So if on the hub site homepage, I drop a nice highlighted content web part program with whatever I'm trying to highlight, um, it's actually gonna by default pull from all of the sites. You can program it so that it only pulls from certain sites, but by default, it's doing the, we got, uh, we got my friend Steven Rose Steven doing it. Oh, he's, can you do that in front of the camera? Rose, Steven Rose is going to be on dance, with us dance. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, excellent. We're going to Steven Rose talking all about OneDrive stuff Well, then stuff you got to have him dance because his dance, and I know why he's doing it. All right. It's great dance. So I'm going to come and dance for you. Um, okay, we'll have Steven so, dance tomorrow on the podcast. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So once you've got that nice search experience, of course, it's like content search you know, mm -hmm. by search yeah. of web parts of the past. But in this modern aspect, especially in a hub, you just don't have to program anything. You just, you know, do those couple of steps to bring your sites together. And when you start to build those dynamic experiences based on search, it's just drop it on, a few choices on the right-hand side, and, and you're good to go. Um, so beyond that, we're also rolling up content. Uh, we're rolling up the site activities. So activities from across all sites are visible in the new sites web part. Mm -hmm. And of course, the roll-up of news, which is one of our kind of headliner sure. news web part at the top. But it's got a new layout, so you can see more news, and you can actually see what sites are each news article coming from. And for us, that was sort of the first step into what now we're announcing as organizational news. Um, but that, at, at the time, was sort of the most parent level thing. The hub site level, you can publish news that goes out to everybody, or you can flow news up from the underlying sites. And that's yep. driving into mobile experiences. Absolutely. You can so access got some updates coming there. And... Yep. So anytime somebody publishes news that relates to you based on what we know about you and the Microsoft graph, um, or if you're active in a site, you're going to see news when it's published there. You'll get a notification on your device. You can, of course, read the news. You can save it for later. You can add a comment. You can share it to somebody. You know, it's not like we have to take you all the way into the hub. <laughs> you're just reading the news from the hub. But yeah, of course it plays yeah. into that. Yeah. But I can go to a hub site, navigate to a site, navigate down to a content list, you know. It's Perfect. all well connected. Yeah, awesome. and one nice thing you guys added too, you talked about yesterday was previously to Hubify a site, yeah. it was PowerShell. So you had to go yeah. either be able to run PowerShell or know somebody that could run the PowerShell to add it. Now you can actually Hubify a site right from the UI and with that you can tie approval into it. Yeah, so the big thing that we announced was when you associate a site to a hub, you can kick off a site script. So that imagine, you know, if you're managing at the hub level and you want any site to come in to have a certain column structure, to have, a, you know, a certain set of permissions applied yep. to it, of course the theme will happen. But if you want to influence other things, anything you can do with site scripting, now you can bind it at that time programmatically when the site joins that hub. Um, in terms of the uh, be able to create a hub, for a little while, it's still going to be PowerShell. PowerShell, okay. Um, and we think that's okay for a little while because it's an admin task. Yeah. Yep. Um, but definitely the team is reviewing how can we bring that to the UI. And we think a center of gravity will probably be the SharePoint Online Admin Center, mm -hmm. um, but not breaking any big okay. news there. Um, <laughs> but definitely we know that that's a big ask. We want it to be easy. We don't want it to be challenging to create hub sites. We want people to plan for them mindfully <laughs> because if Susan just, Hanley, just, just a little bit of thought, right? Yeah. If Susan Hanley or any good information architecture were sitting here, she would tell you don't just create hubs to create hubs. Well, it doesn't uh, take away the need for having a control plane and understanding governance and, and having those structures right. in place. It does mean we can be more meaningful and spend more time thinking about them because we're not maintaining the infrastructure and all the other things that go behind it. That's right. That's yeah, right. We're all SharePoint people. We've all seen sites fall <laughs> in SharePoint, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, the last thing that obviously is a huge part for governance, uh, just like you were saying, is that when I join a site to a hub, I'm not always going to be the hub owner, so I have to sometimes get approval. So just like we have page approval, mm -hmm. we'll have that now on association to a hub before it actually starts to crawl and get the theme and roll yep. up content. 
somebody has to say yes. And those are driven out of flow as well? Those are driven so out of flow. Customer, It'll, customizable. Yeah. And, yep. yeah, and it could be as simple as you get an email and say yes. Yeah. If you know the person or you know the project so, they're working yeah, on. Yeah, we have an action button. And, yep. yeah. Or it can be take me to the site, let me review it. And again, then if you have that approval process with the automated site script, that's it's, pretty it's, close to a pretty well governed. Let people create what done. they need to, yeah. but when they start to either up level it or do some crazy stuff, add but some it, it always helps to have the rails right and, yep. and yep. drive that experience a little bit more. Yep. And, and, and it rails gives everybody, are good for everybody warm fuzzies. Yep. Yeah, but this I think these types of rails are the kind that you know you, it would be like more like Willy Wonka type trains. You can go off the rails <laughs> a little bit. And not feel stifled, so that you run over there. And well, I was I was saying more, more you can, you can jump the rail, but you're going <laughs> to land back on. <laughs> you're going to land back on the rail. That's or good. at That's least land on another yeah. set. Yeah. I like it. I like. It's it. like Back to the Future. We got to switch. Everybody and go wants to wear the conductor yeah. hat, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Some have bigger hats than others. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's about it. We need to get off. We got what AC and CJ. Yeah, we don't want to get kicked off by the. Yeah, big we guys. don't want to get kicked <laughs> off by them. Yeah. But well, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for spending the time. Thanks for letting us not only further advertise <laughs> MS Cloud IT Pro, but the interzone. We're, we're, we're babies in the in the field of podcasting, so we're happy to get the word. Thank you for getting and helping to get the word out. Yeah, no yeah like we said, we'll have everything have in the show notes it. for you. Everybody can go to msclouditpro.com and catch up on the latest news. Yeah, yeah, and I would say one thing for these guys' show, go to iTunes, rate and review, and while you're there, oh, maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> rate and review the intro yeah, zone. Yeah, there you go. But don't don't go review the MS Cloud show. They're, yeah, they're yeah, yeah. yeah. Those guys yeah, are weird. It's hugely <laughs> confusing. <laughs> yeah, we'll let them. They can try to yeah. pitch their cells later. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate thanks it. for having me on. Thank you very nice much. chatting with you. Yeah. Thanks.